Hello, and welcome to how to get great guitar tones out of Mainstage. In this video, I'm going to show you how to emulate the setups of touring guitar players that play larger venues. From the previous video, we already have a single channel input going into a single channel amp with a couple of additional sounds to fatten it out. What I'm going to do now is add additional sounds to go to the left and to the right. I'm going to add an auxiliary channel strip here. I'm going to call it patch bus number one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a line six guitar amp. From there, I'm going to throw on the red wires mix IR plugin. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the line six amp farm here, and I'm going to pick out an amplifier that I think, well, that will really give me an additional bit of just oomph to what's going on. So I'm going to take the Plexi Variact sound. I'm going to go in, I'm going to turn off the cabinet, so we don't need it. We'll mute the original sound that we had from the previous video, and this is what we're going to get right now, so it's going to sound pretty nasty. That's because there's no amp, there's no mic, there's no cabinet. It's strictly just the amp head. The next step is to actually throw up a little bit more volume And since we're going after a Marshall sound, let's take a Marshall 1960B with T75s. And for this one, I'm going to use a Sennheiser 421. We'll throw that on the cap at three inches out, and now we have this. That's a pretty ballsy type amp right there. Dial back the mids, dial back the treble, turn up the presence just a little bit, and we get... dial out more of the mids and we're losing a little bit of the balls so we'll bring it back turn the gain up a little bit bring the volume up now I'm going to add a second microphone to that we'll try an AKG 414 we'll throw that on the cone edge at four inches out Wow, did that beef up the tone. Bring that back out. Let's go a little further away. And we're losing too much. So let's go with the 414 on the cap, on the edge, and we'll bring it out at five inches. And that's not adding the correct sound that I want. Let's go right to the cap and let's bring it in three inches as well. All right, so that's getting me a thick, juicy type of sound. With this particular amp, since I'm going to actually pan it to the side, I'm going to use an ambient mic and use it for the left-hand side. I'm going to leave things in mono for now. And then I'm going to take that and throw it to the left. Now, if I turn the original sound we had from the previous video on, and we play the two together, we get this. Need to turn off the effects, and we have this. And you can hear that this amp on this side is throwing in just a slightly different amount of tone. Now the next step is, we're gonna throw in one more amplifier. Add another auxiliary channel strip, Throw it into the patch bus number one. This time we'll choose an amp head from Logic, the amp designer. I'm going to throw on our Mix IR Red Wires plug-in as well. And here I'm going to choose the modern British stack, since we're kind of going with a Marshall-y kind of sound all the way around. I'm going to turn off the cabinet, go direct. And for right now, what we'll hear is this. That doesn't get us a whole lot because there's not a lot of gain going on. With the gain in, obviously it sounds like a crispy, crunchy kind of simulated amp head without a cabinet. So we're going to throw on another cabinet and microphone. This time around, I'm going to go a little bit crazy. Instead of using that, I'm going to use a 
SVT 810. We're going to go with a bass amp on this. Go a little crazy. Go a little crazy. We'll throw a Royer 121 right on the cone at four inches out. And now we have this. That's a big beefy tone. It's a little too beefy maybe. Let's pull it out and let's go 12 inches. We need to turn the reverb off of that amp. If we throw an SM57 on that, actually, let's try this SM7. We'll throw it on the cap. And we'll throw that at four inches out. And we get another crispy, crunchy type of sound. And if I dial back the bass a little bit, since it's going through a bass amp, we'll bring the treble back and the mids down. We should actually clean up a bit but it's still nice and thick. What I would like to do now is roll that all the way to the right. And we'll just mute the, t mute the center channel. We'll get the two that we've already created for left and right. And we have a nice thick sound like that. What I would like to do is bring the output or the overall output of this channel down to match the channel that's going on on the left. One thing I've forgotten to do is throw a room sound in. Let's say that we're using a multi-cabinet setup. I'm going to throw a Bogner in on the situation and use the ambient mics from a Bogner. And since I'm using the right side, we'll try the KM84 room right. And now we have a little bit more of a roomy sound to our setup. Still feeling like that amp is a little too thick on that right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a different EQ. Let's go for the US Classic. And then we need to bring the volume back up just a little bit. And now we have our guitar tone set for two amps left and right. And it sounds like this. Big, thick, and crunchy for a nice classic type of sound. And now all three of them together without any of the extra effects from the first one, it sounds like this. If we want to dial in in terms of volume levels a little bit more, we could bring this down to match the volumes of the others. And that gets you a nice, big, thick, crunchy sound. Let's throw those original effects back on and hear what we have now. And that's how you get a multi-amp setup in a single patch without too much trouble in main stage. In the next video, I'm going to deconstruct one of my songs to show you how I'm changing sounds and amplifiers over the course of the song.